Okay, here we are, first one. Let's see what kind of progress we can make on the first one. Can he take his bag and stuff or did he? that this is true. Okay, so what we're doing oops, is we're going to try to prove that this stuff can just be boiled down to this. Okay? So remember, we treat this like our given and we want to end up with our to prove. So the first thing I notice when I look at this is that I have two fractions added together. Right, everybody see that? Pretty obvious, two fractions added together. So how do we add fractions? Common denominator. Now, your common denominator is going to have to be both of these things. Those are quantities. So your common denominator will be comprised of both of them. So, this one, the first fraction, already has the 1 minus, so I'm going to multiply him by 1 plus. Now, keep in mind, I'm doing it on the top and the bottom, both. That's how it's legal. I have to do it at the top and bottom, so that's how they match now, right? Then this one's going to be 1 minus cosine on the bottom and the top. Everybody with me? Understand what I just did? Okay, so now both denominators are exactly the same, so I can combine them into one fraction with that denominator. So what's on top then? On top, I just have 1 plus cosine plus 1 minus cosine. seventh grade or whatever. I'm just using cosines now instead of plain numbers. So what happens on the bottom? These cancel and I am left with one minus cosine squared. Now that guy right there should make your heart flutter because that's a big time identity. The identity actually says sine squared plus cosine squared is one, but you can rearrange that. If you rearranged it, if you moved the cosine squared over to here, what would it say? One minus cosine, one minus cosine squared equals sine squared. So we can change that into sine squared. One minus cosine squared is sine squared and vice versa because of that identity that can be rearranged. Sunshine, are you okay? Huh? Okay. All right, now I make two over sine squared. Remember that, you don't have to do this, but think about it. Isn't that the same as two over one times one over sine squared. Isn't this another way of thinking about that? And what's one over sine squared? What's one over sine? What's the reciprocal of sine? Cosecant. So you end up with two times cosecant.
but you better see yourself doing it because you're going to have to in a few days. All right, next. So they need a common denominator, and the common denominator this time will be cosine sine. Everybody agree with that? So what does the first fraction need to have a common denominator? He needs a sine, and the second one needs a cosine. Now, do they both have exactly the same denominator? Yep. So what do I have up top? Sine squared plus cosine. Oh! Sine squared plus cosine squared gives me shivers because what is it? One. one. So now I have one over cosine sine. Now, these guys are being multiplied. That's cosine times sine. So again, you can write this down or just think about it. Isn't that like having 1 over cosine times 1 over sine? Doesn't that equal this? It's multiplied. And what's 1 over cosine? And 1 over sine. So there you have it. There you have it. All right, I'm going to save... Um, the last two for tomorrow. I want to do a couple more problems. So you don't need to get out a sheet of paper or find a place to write this down. I want to do a couple of equations. thing that 5-1, uh, we just practiced a couple from 5-2. From 5-1, we were solving some equations like this. So we'll just do a couple practice problems here. Okay. Tomorrow we'll do the same thing. We'll practice a couple from 5-2 and a couple from 5-1. And then the next time I see you in person after that, we'll have a little quiz. Okay. But let's we'll practice this. Here we go. So Notice the directions. I changed it up. This means I'm going to answer in radians, and that means I'm going to answer in degrees. I think I have rigged both of these so that no calculator is necessary, but we'll see as we go. We should be able to do these without a calculator. All right, how do I solve this? What do I do first? 
add the one. You heard somebody say add the one. Absolutely. Then what? Divide by the root three. Now I know I normally we kind of frown on that, but leave it. Because that isn't the answer. The answer is going to be the angles that have a tangent of one over root three. Are these numbers familiar to you? Yeah. yeah. So you should be thinking about a triangle where opposite over adjacent is 1 over root 3. So opposite over adjacent is 1 over root 3. How does that look to you? Here's the, the part that you got to be on guard for, though. There's another triangle where opposite over adjacent is 1 over root 3. Would you expect they're going, yeah, it's quadrant 3. Why is the tangent also positive in quadrant 3? Because opposite and adjacent are both negative. Right? Now, the angle, these are the angles here going to be the same, the same triangle. Um, how big is that guy right there, that angle right there? Across He's 30 degrees, but I need to be in radians, so that'll be a 6, pi over 6. And so is this one. So one of my answers is pi over 6. My other answer, the one all the way around here, is pi plus pi over 6, which would be 7 pi over 6, 1 and a sixth. Everybody okay with that? All right, what about this one? What are you going to do with this one? Huh? Well, that's not good enough. You can't just shrug. Okay. Somebody's coming down the court with the ball. You don't just shrug. You do something, right? What do we have to do? Yeah, if I know what to do, I do it. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at that problem. No, it's no different than any other thing you do. Be creative, problem solve. Yes, bam, thank you. Factor out the GCF. Well, what can you factor out of this? Two and a sign. So what is that going to leave you with if you take out a two and a sign? It's going to leave you with two and a sign. Minus one. So equal to zero. So two sign equals zero. Or two sign minus one equals zero. So what does this one say? This one says sine equals zero. And this one says sine equals one half. Now zeros are special, remember? What do you remember about zeros? You gotta look on the circle for zeros. So we're gonna go around the circle and we're gonna figure out where the sine which is y is zero. So where is y zero? Here, no, why is not zero up there? Y zero here and here. So in degrees, this problem's in degrees, those answers are zero and 180 in degrees. Now, where is the sign a half? Well, for sure, you can look in quadrant one for where the sign is a half. But there's always another quadrant. So where else would sign be positive? Quadrant two. So you have the same triangle but now it's over here in quadrant two. All right, how big is that reference angle right there? 30. 
this time we're going to leave it 30 because we're in degrees. So one of your answers is 30. What's the one over here in quadrant two? 150 because it's 180 minus 30. Okay. All right, so that's enough practice and review. We'll, we'll do the exact same thing tomorrow with, with some more. But that's where we're at so far. We've uh, proven things, we've simplified things, and we've solved a few different equations. All right, so today we're going to start with 5, 3. So get your notes out. says sine u minus v, that's a difference. So if you want to take the sine of an angle minus an angle, you have a formula there that will do it. Okay? So think of this as your u and this as your v. Sine u minus v. What does your formula say? Sine Um, so sine 45, cosine 30, minus cosine 45, sine 30? Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to memorize that identity, but you have to be able to use it. You have to recognize, oh, this is my sine of a difference formula. Sine of the first, cosine of the second, minus cosine of the first, sine of the second. Now, are these all special angles? They are. So, you might have these memorized. You don't have to ever, as far as I'm concerned, but you gotta be able to figure it out. So over to the side, I'm gonna draw my 45 degree triangle and my 30 degree triangle, since those are the two that I am using in this problem. And then I'm going to plug in each of these four things. So the sine of 45. Um, one over two. I'm gonna write that as root two over two because at some point I'm gonna to have to rationalize so I'll just do it right now. One over root two. Cosine 30. 
Group three over here. Kids, Sokotoa, come on now, Sokotoa. Cosine 45. One over root two or root two over two and sine 30. So step one, my angle wasn't special, so I made it in terms of special, so 45 minus 30. Applied my formula and then plugged in all four pieces of the formula. Now, this is a multiply. What do I get when I multiply these two? Root six over four. This is a multiply. What do I get when I multiply these two? Root two over four. Now, root six minus root two cannot be subtracted. However, they do have a common denominator, so typically we write our answer as one fraction. This is the exact sine of 45, or sine of 15, I'm sorry, the exact sine of 15. Okay, everybody follow all those steps because we're going to do it again with cosine 165. Okay? Yeah. So here we go. I'm going to leave those triangles there in case I need them. Alright, so cosine 165. know what you're thinking. You're thinking, mm, 165 is a little big. I'm not going to be able to add 45 and 60 and 30 and all that. I'm not going to be able to get 165. So here's what I want you to remember. When we, we ran into it earlier, when I was doing my 30 degree triangle, could that 30 degree triangle actually be over here in quadrant two, for example? Then it wouldn't be a 30, it would be a 150. So when you do this, you guys, you can use any quadrant special angle. So, for example, 60 degrees over here, that would be 120. So you can use any version, any quadrant of your 30, 60, and 45. Okay? So now, can you think of two of those? that would either add or subtract to give you 165. I'll give you a hint. When I see it, when it ends in a five, I always think 45. So what about 120 plus 45? Would that work? Would that be one option? Yeah. So that's what immediately pops into my head. And is 120 special? Yeah, because isn't it a 60 degree angle over here? So this is going to be my picture, and this is going to be my picture for this problem. Because I've chosen to use 120 and 45. All right, what's the formula say about cosine of angle plus angle? Cosine u plus b is cosine. Cosine u times cosine b minus sine u times sine u. Yep. So the cosine of a sum is cosine cosine minus sine sine. That's exactly right. So again, there are four pieces that you're going to be filling in, but you're going to use your triangle to do that. All right, cosine 120. Here's my 120. Oh, I didn't label it yet. The only thing you have to be careful about when you do this in other quadrants is the negatives, right? So you're allowed to draw your 45 in any quadrant, your 30 in any quadrant, your 60 in any quadrant, but you gotta pay attention to negatives when you're in those other quadrants. Okay, so what's the cosine here? Negative one over two, perfect. 
What's the cosine up here? 45. Root 2 over 2. And sine 120. Root 3 over 2. And sine 45 is root 2 over 2. Sine and cosine are the same for 45. So what do we have this time? Again, if each pair is multiplied. So this is negative root 2 over 4 minus root 6 over 4. That isn't exactly the same, but does it look kind of similar to what we got a minute ago? Yeah. Guess what, folks? It's always going to look similar because you're always using what numbers? These, right? So you're always going to get some kind of combination of that. In your sine and cosine. All right, anybody have a question there about that? Okay. Tangent 195. Tangent 195. Need two specials that add up or subtract to 195. 150 plus 45. 150 and 45. That sounds great to me. 150 and 45. Is 150 special? I think I have this drawn on the board. Isn't this 150, guys, right here? Yeah. So this time, I'm going to use that one and my 45 again. So I'm going to use these two. So I'll label these sides. Don't forget the negative on the root 3 for your 150. What's my formula say for the tangent of an angle plus an angle? So we'll deal with that. Um, but in the beginning, it's easy. There's only two numbers you need. You need to know the tangent of 150, and you need to know the tangent of 45. So what's the tangent of 150? it now, but at some point you have to, so I just do it right from the beginning. And what's the tangent of 1? One. One. Oh, what's the tangent of 45? 1. one. Alright, so here we go. So I have negative root 3 over 3 plus 1 over 1 minus negative root 3 over 3 times 1. Just plugging in for my formula. So I have negative root 3 over 3 plus 1. What happens down here? What does this become? Let's simplify that denominator. 1 plus root 3 over 3. Right? Okay. What a mess. about stuff like this before not this is called a complex fraction and the easiest way to handle a complex fraction is to multiply each piece of it by the common denominator so would you agree that the common denominator of the whole problem so this 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 and this the common denominator is three so I'm going to times everything by three so that's going to cancel this, and we need a negative root 3 plus 3. 3 plus, cancel that, root 3. So what I just did, 
was basically get rid of all the little fractions. Now, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom. You have a guess what I'm going to multiply by? Think about algebra 2. What did you multiply by when you had something like this? 3 minus root 3. Call it the conjugate. So first of all, I times everything by 3 to get rid of the fraction. Now I'm multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. And that's just going to be a foil, you guys. It's just going to be a foil. So negative 3 root 3 plus 3 plus 9 minus 3 root 3. Remember, when you multiply a radical of root 3 times root 3, you just get 3.
All right, negative 45. Negative 45 would be down here, guys. Negative. Just like I went this way for negative 210. I gotta go this way for negative 45. So that means I'm gonna have a negative. Everybody on board with the pictures? Now we need our formula. Formula of sine of two angles added together. Here we go. The formula says sine of the first, cosine of the second, plus cosine of the first, sine of the second. Sine u, cosine v, plus Sign, 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 sign. All right, go ahead, see if we can plug it in, guys. over 2 is the second one, and negative root 3 over 2, and negative root 2 over 2. So let's see, root 2 plus root 6 over 4, is that what you got? So we have 4 over root 2 plus root 6. Okay, that's all right. Let's do what we did a minute ago. What shall I multiply by? Root 2 minus root 6. Now, foil out the bottom. Tell me what you get on the bottom. you get 2 minus 6, don't you get negative 4? So you have 4 times root 2 minus root 6 over negative 4. Well, what's going to happen? The 4s are going to cancel, and we're going to end up with a negative root 2 and a positive root 6. right now. I'm going to go through number A with you and then I'm going to have you try to figure out the rest of them. We have sine 58 cosine 32 minus sine 32 cosine 58. Now that is one of your formulas. You have the sheet in front of you. Forget the numbers. There are no numbers on your sheet. So forget the numbers. Just look at the pattern. You have sine cosine minus sine cosine, or on the sheet it might say sine cosine minus cosine sine. These can be flipped. So what is that? 
Which function is that a formula for? Sine. Sine. And it's two angles, either added or subtracted. So which one is it when it's sine, cosine, minus, cosine, sine? It's the subtraction. And what are your two angles? Your two angles are 58 and 32. So this is a formula for the sine of 26. That's it. That's what you're supposed to do. Figure out what this is a formula for. This is not special. You're not going to get any answer. This is the answer. That's it. Okay? So look at the, the rest of them. There's four more. Um, that last one, last one, got kind of cut off, so I'll write like those up here. So see if you can figure out, using your reference sheet, what these are formulas for. Function is a sine, cosine, or tangent? It's a tangent. Is it angle plus angle or angle minus angle? Plus. plus. And the angles are 13 and 18. So did you say tan 31? Perfect. 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 All right, what about this guy? Cosine, cosine. Minus sine, sine. Which function? Cosine. Cosine. Added or subtracted? Added. Angles are 12x and 9x. Did you say cosine 21x? Yeah. Now Miss Ford got wild and wacky. Got wild and wacky. What's what's wacky about this? It's backwards, isn't it? Isn't it backwards? You do not have a formula that says sine sine minus cosine cosine. But you have one that says cosine, cosine, minus, sine, sine. So I'm going to go ahead and start by factoring a negative out of this and rewriting it as cosine 6, cosine 10, minus sine 6, sine 10. So in other words, I'm going to pull a negative out so that my formula is now in the right order. Okay, so I'm going to hang on to that. What is this the formula for? Isn't it the one we just used? Isn't this the cosine of a sum? Cosine 16? But because I had to turn it around, it's going to be negative cosine 16. It's going to be the opposite of the cosine 16 because I had to turn the formula around to match it. All right, what's this one? Sine. Sine. 
plus or minus plus 37 and 19, what is that sign, 56? Yeah. All right, you okay with that? Yeah. All right, get out your homework, 5-1 and 5-2. And I'll do a couple problems for you. If you have run into any. Oh, got hands up all over the place. Okay, we'll start with you, Nyla. Maybe number three on five one. Five one number three. All right, five one number three. Okay, this is good practice for us. Um, for our quiz, except this is just a simple one. This isn't a two proof. So in other words, I don't have an end goal. I'm just going to see what I can do with this. But it is two fractions. What do we do when we subtract two fractions? We get a common denominator. So our common denominator is going to have to be both of these things. So my common denominator is going to be one minus sine and cosine. Can we change the one minus sine x to or not minus right now? Catch yourself. Yeah, Why not? not? Squared. It's not squared. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. If it were squared, I would definitely change it. Um, but it's not, so I can't. All right, so this one's going to be times by cosine. And this one's going to be times by a one minus sine. Nyla, you with me so far? All right, so what have I got on top? Looks like I have cosine squared. Now be careful here. This is going to be a distribute. So it's going to be minus sine times 1, and then minus sine times minus sine, which is going to be plus sine squared. That's a distribute, negative sine. Negative sine times one, negative sine times negative sine. Why am I so excited? Right there, they don't have to be next to each other, kids. If you got sine squared and cosine squared, you've got one. So now I have one minus sine on the top, and I have one minus sine sign on the bottom. You are allowed to cancel in the entirety. I couldn't cancel out just a sign or something, but I can cancel the whole shebang. And what does that leave me with? One over cosine, which is fine, but you could actually take that one step further. One over cosine is secant. Perfect. All right, one more. One more, five one or five two, because they're both due what tomorrow? Yeah. All right, so what do we got? No more? Oh, Nyla? Change the number three on um, five two. Five two, number three. Actually, Nyla, I think I did it already today. I think it's exactly what I did earlier. I want to get it started to see. One over tangent is cotangent. So I'm going to think of it as cotangent plus tangent. And then I'm going to change this into co. I'm doing this fast because I already did it. This problem is what we did. Um, remember doing this earlier? Then we're going to get a common denominator, which is going to be sine cosine. If you don't like the betas, you can change those to x's or something. You can always change your variable. So this one's going to get times by cosine. This is going to get the cosine squared. This is going to get times by sine. So I've got sine squared, which is 1 over. Nyla, are you remembering this now? Yeah. Yeah. That's 1 over sine times 1 over cosine, which is secant times cosecant. Yeah. So that problem is exactly like the one that was on the practice quiz we did earlier. Okay, all right, so tomorrow we will practice again the same way we did at the beginning of this period. And then, um, uh, 
um, we'll continue on with life.